Often, Africa is overshadowed in historical narratives, with the spotlight typically shining on the histories of European, Asian or Middle Eastern empires. However, the African continent has a rich and intricate history, marked by the emergence of mighty empires that significantly shaped Africa's fate and left an indelible impact on the wider world. The history of Africa is a vibrant tapestry woven with diverse cultures, civilizations and empires that have risen and fallen over thousands of years. Some of these empires are still well known today, while others have faded into obscurity. In this comprehensive journey, we'll travel back in time to unearth the tales of some of the great African empires, tracing their paths from their inception to their eventual downfall. And remember, your support is vital to us. So, if you find our content valuable, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe to help our channel grow. Your support means the world to us. The Songhai Empire the African Colossus was one of the largest empires in African history. Located along the Niger River in West Africa, it succeeded the Mali Empire and reached its zenith during the 16th century. The rise of the Songhai Empire can be attributed to its leaders, particularly Sunni Ali and Askia Muhammad. Sunni Ali, the founder of the Sunni dynasty, expanded the empire's territory and consolidated his power through military conquests. His successor, Askia Muhammad, was a devout Muslim who brought stability and good governance to the empire. One of the most significant aspects of the Songhai Empire was its organization and administrative structure. The empire was divided into provinces, each with its governor. A central government oversaw tax collection, trade and the military. The Songhai capital, Gao, became a center of commerce and culture. Under Askia Muhammad, the Songhai Empire reached its greatest territorial extent. It controlled vast portions of West Africa, from the Atlantic coast to Lake Chad. The empire was characterized by a strong Islamic influence, with Timbuktu once again playing a vital role in the dissemination of Islamic scholarship. The downfall of the Songhai Empire was precipitated by a series of events, including the Moroccan invasion in 1591, which saw the use of advanced firearms against Songhai forces. The empire fractured into smaller states, and its once great cities were reduced to ruins. The Benin Empire. Venturing further south, we discover the Benin Empire, a kingdom of artistry nestled in what is now Nigeria. The Benin Empire, renowned for its extraordinary art and bronze casting, is a testament to the kingdom's cultural accomplishments and artistic mastery. In the century, the Benin Empire flourished through trade with neighboring states and European powers, including the Portuguese. Its capital, the city of Benin, now known as Edo, was famed for its impressive city walls. This network of earth fortifications stretched for miles, safeguarding the city and its crucial trade routes. One of the most enduring legacies of the Benin Empire is its art, especially its bronze and brass sculptures. The kingdom's craftsmen created intricate and lifelike depictions of royal figures, animals and scenes from everyday life. These works of art have profoundly influenced both African and Western art and are celebrated for their exquisite detail. The kingdom was marked by a strong central authority under the Oba, who wielded both political and spiritual power. However, in the late 19th century, the Benin Empire's relations with European powers, particularly the British, deteriorated. A punitive expedition in 1897 led to the sacking of Benin City, the looting of its artistic treasures and the exile of the Oba. The Benin Empire was effectively absorbed into the British Empire, becoming part of the British Protectorate of Southern Nigeria. While the empire itself may have ceased to exist, its cultural heritage and artistic achievements continue to be celebrated and preserved, living on as a testament to a once great kingdom. The majestic architecture of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe. Embark with us on a journey to the southern reaches of Africa, where we discover the awe-inspiring Kingdom of Zimbabwe. 
This kingdom is renowned for its extraordinary stone architecture, especially the city of Great Zimbabwe, the kingdom's capital. Constructed between the 11th and 15th centuries, Great Zimbabwe stands as one of the largest stone structures in pre-colonial southern Africa. The city boasts towering stone walls, impressive towers, and a labyrinth of enclosures. The exact purpose of Great Zimbabwe sparks lively debates among historians. However, it's widely believed to have been a hub of trade, religion, and governance. The Kingdom of Zimbabwe amassed its wealth through control of trade routes dealing in gold, ivory, and other precious commodities. Great Zimbabwe's strategic location along these trade routes enabled the kingdom to accumulate substantial wealth. In addition to its wealth, the kingdom boasted a formidable army and fostered robust relations with neighboring states. The decline of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe remained shrouded in mystery. A combination of factors, including environmental changes, political instability, and resource exhaustion, are thought to have led to the abandonment of Great Zimbabwe and the subsequent decline of the kingdom. The Kingdom of Ghana The trade hub of West Africa. Ghana, nestled in what we now know as southeastern Mauritania and western Mali, stands as one of the earliest empires in West African history. Strategically located at the crossroads of vital trans-Saharan trade routes, Ghana controlled the flow of gold and salt, establishing itself as a significant economic and political hub. The origins of Ghana can be traced back to around the 6th century CE. The rulers of Ghana, known as the Ghanas, facilitated trade by safeguarding the routes and imposing taxes on passing caravans. This revenue enabled Ghana to build a formidable military and establish a sophisticated system of government. The city of Kumbi Saleh, Ghana's capital, was a vibrant urban centre. It was divided into two distinct districts, one for Muslim traders and another for the king and his court. The kingdom's economic prosperity and relative stability attracted merchants and travellers from various regions. However, the decline of the Ghana Empire was due to a combination of factors, including internal conflicts, external invasions, and shifts in trade routes. In the 11th century, the Almoravid Berbers, a North African Islamic dynasty, invaded Ghana, disrupting its power. Eventually, the empire fragmented into smaller states and ceased to exist as a unified entity. The Kingdom of Aksum Aksum, nestled in what we now know as northern Ethiopia and Eritrea, was a powerhouse among ancient African civilizations, with roots reaching back to the first century CE. Famed for its towering obelisks and distinctive architectural style, Aksum was a sight to behold. The Kingdom of Aksum, also known as the Oxumite Kingdom, was a significant trading force, bridging the gap between the Red Sea, Africa's interior, and the Mediterranean. It held sway over the trade of precious commodities like ivory, gold, and exotic spices. The wealth of Aksum was mirrored in its awe-inspiring stone obelisks, some of which soared over 100 feet into the sky. The Kingdom of Aksum holds a special place in the annals of Christianity. It's believed to be one of the earliest regions to embrace Christianity as the state religion around the 4th century CE. The advent of Christianity had a profound impact, shaping the culture and society of Aksum. However, the Oxumite Empire began to wane in the 7th century. A confluence of factors, including the rise of Islam, shifts in trade routes and environmental changes contributed to its decline. By the 8th century, the once mighty kingdom had splintered into smaller states. Zulu Kingdom Our journey now takes us to the southern part of Africa, where we encounter the resilient Zulu Kingdom, standing firm against colonialism. The Zulus, a people speaking the Bantu language, established a formidable empire in the early 19th century under the leadership of Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu, a prominent military leader in Africa, brought revolutionary changes to Zulu warfare. 
He introduced the bullhorn battle formation and the stabbing spear, transforming the Zulu army into an intimidating force. Under Shaka's leadership, the Zulus expanded their territory, becoming a significant power in the region. The rise of the Zulu kingdom coincided with the European colonization of Africa. In 1879, the British and the Zulus clashed in the Anglo-Zulu War. This conflict resulted in the defeat of the Zulu forces and the eventual colonization of their lands. Despite this setback, the Zulu culture and identity endured. Today, the Zulu people remain a significant cultural and political force in modern South Africa, a testament to their resilience and spirit. Oyo Empire Let's journey back in time to the Oyo Empire, a beacon of Yoruba power. Nestled in what we now know as southwestern Nigeria, the Oyo Empire was a formidable force in pre-colonial West Africa. This empire was renowned for its centralized governance, military prowess, and unique religious customs. The roots of Oyo can be traced back to the 14th century with the founding of the Oyo city-state. Through a blend of diplomacy and military conquest, the empire expanded its reach. The Oyo Empire was marked by a rigid hierarchy, with the Oba often reigning supreme, and the Oyo Messi, a council of chiefs, aiding in governance. The empire controlled trade routes and levied taxes on a variety of goods, including kola nuts and slaves. It was also a vibrant hub for art and culture. The Yoruba people, celebrated for their intricate wood carvings and religious rituals, contributed to a rich artistic legacy. However, the Oyo Empire eventually grappled with internal discord, including factional disputes and challenges to its authority. External threats, such as assaults from Fulani extremist groups and British forces, played a part in the empire's decline in the 19th century. Swahili city-states Welcome to the story of the Swahili city-states, the East African trade hubs. Nestled on the eastern coast of Africa, we find the Swahili city-states. These were a network of independent trading communities that rose to prominence as key players in the Indian Ocean trade. Stretching from modern-day Somalia to Mozambique, the Swahili coast was a bustling center for maritime trade, connecting Africa with the Middle East, India and Southeast Asia. City-states like Kilwa, Mombasa and Zanzibar flourished, thanks to their roles as intermediaries in this profitable trade. The Swahili city-states were melting pots of various cultures, including Bantu, Arab, Persian, and Indian. The result? A unique blend of influences that shaped Swahili culture and language. Trade in precious commodities like gold, ivory, spices, and slaves brought wealth and influence to the Swahili city-states. They also embraced Islam, which played a pivotal role in shaping their culture and society. However, the decline of the Swahili city-states was inevitable. A combination of factors, including the arrival of the Portuguese in the 16th century, disrupted established trade routes. The growth of other European powers in the Indian Ocean region also played a part. Over time, these city-states lost their prominence in the global trade network. Now, let's talk about the decline of African empires and the colonial era. The downfall of many African empires coincided with the onset of European colonialism, which had profound and lasting impacts on the continent. European powers, fueled by imperial ambitions and a thirst for resources, established colonies across Africa. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw the scramble for Africa, where European powers divided the continent amongst themselves. This partition was often arbitrary, disregarding traditional borders and ethnic divisions. It led to the loss of sovereignty for many African states and a long era of foreign domination. Colonial rule had a devastating impact on African societies. European powers exploited Africa's resources, imposed new forms of governance, and established a system of forced labor. African cultures and traditions were often suppressed or marginalized, and resistance to colonial rule was met with harsh repression. The legacy of colonialism is still evident in modern Africa, 
with many nations grappling with the consequences of the past. The struggle for independence, which gained momentum in the mid-20th century, ultimately led to the decolonization of Africa and the emergence of newly independent states. The mid-20th century witnessed a wave of African countries gaining independence from colonial rule. This period of decolonization saw the emergence of numerous new nations, each facing its unique set of challenges. African nations faced the daunting task of nation-building, which involved establishing political institutions, developing economies, and forging national identities. Many countries also grappled with ethnic and tribal divisions inherited from the colonial era, which posed significant challenges to national unity. During this time, various African leaders and movements played pivotal roles in the struggle for independence and the subsequent shaping of their nations. Figures like Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, Patrice Lumumba of Congo, and Nelson Mandela of South Africa became iconic figures in the struggle for African self-determination. The period following independence also brought challenges, including the legacy of colonialism, economic underdevelopment, political instability, and external pressures from the Cold War superpowers. Some African nations experience political instability. We've reached the conclusion of our video. We value your opinions, so please share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and spread our content to help more people understand and contribute to the narratives about the black community. We appreciate your viewership.